hello hello <laughs> i am georgia and today we are talking about every book i read in 2023 okay so we had a really good year of books in 2023 i read some great books and i definitely am probably going to end up recommending most of the books i read but obviously you can decide which ones you want to read. <laughs> so to kick off 2023, the first book I read was The Paper Palace and this I highly recommend. <laughs> I loved this book. There are so many layers. There is such this intertwining history of its two characters and a lot of dysfunctional family dynamics. So if that sounds like a vibe for you, definitely pick it up. The next book I read was Lessons in Chemistry and this one really surprised me. I know it was like super hyped up, but the hype lived up. I just thought it was really beautiful and the contrast of being a woman in the science field back in the day, as well as probably today, it was just a really nice perspective to have. Then I read Let My People Go Surfing. And so if you're into business books, definitely read this. Um, it's by the founder of Patagonia. Uh, I definitely felt myself nodding along in agreement as I was reading it in terms of like Patagonia's business values, um, how they kind of put planet over profit and therefore they want slow growth because there is no business without a planet for it to operate on. So I think all of those values are really rich and obviously add to why Patagonia is so successful. So if you are into business books, definitely pick it up. Another one, if you're into that genre, is obviously Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. That is a really easy read in terms of business books and like the stories of founders and startups and things like that. Then I read Malibu Rising, and this is a book that I read on and off during 2022 and into 2023. I like was always picking it up but it never really gripped me I'd read a few chapters put it down leave it for the next time and yeah I enjoyed it maybe pick it up if you're really into the Taylor Jenkins Reid universe but otherwise not a must read then the next book I read was Ruined by Design and this is a must read for anyone working in design or like a related field the analogy that this author produces is that product designers, software engineers, or like developers should have as much regulation as architects and building or construction engineers. And I found that metaphor or visual so true. And I just completely carry it with me every day when I'm working, especially in design. And yeah, I just think generally it's a really important read to understand the the potential consequences and the impact of design on everyday people. Then I read Cultish, and if you watched my previous book, I highly recommend Word Slut by the same author. That was a phenomenal read. Cultish was also great. I learned a lot about cults and what constitutes a cult from like Peloton and Soul Cycle to Children of God. So yeah, if you wanna learn more about cults, definitely read it. She also has a podcast, so you could also probably pick up a lot in podcast form if you prefer that as well. The next book I read was Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And yeah, I don't know. I think this one I could pass on. Then I picked up the sequel, It Starts With Us. That was like such a pass in my opinion. Then I picked up Really Good Actually. I think the story of a young divorcee was quite new perspective for me. So I don't know, pick it up if you really want to, but I'm not saying it's a must read. <laughs> Next I have Cleopatra and Frankenstein. I really liked this book. I don't have it on my bookshelf because I've lent it to friends to read because I liked it so much. I really loved that kind of every second or third chapter in this book was about the friends or family away from the main characters. So we started to get uh, a more holistic picture of these characters' lives and all the people that were intersecting within their universe. <laughs> and I liked that because you just really understand how many layers there is to everyone around a main character, similar to yourself in reality and how all of the people around you are going through their own shit and to just like kind of build empathy for that and them. 
And also the ending I thought was really beautiful and I really liked how it ended. The next book I read was Emotion by Design. This is by the former CMO of Nike. He worked there since he was an intern. So I think like maybe 20 years or something like that he'd been there. And if you're working in the creative industries or advertising and marketing, this is a must read because it covers like a heap of Nike's projects and how they approached their marketing um, and advertising and design. And I think there's a lot of general lessons here in terms of like how such a big business goes about approaching those challenges. Next, I read Small Pleasures and this book is a pass from me. The next one I read is Happy Hour. This was a really sweet and light read. It was a bit hard to read. It wasn't like a page turner, but I did enjoy the premise, which is that it's two women living in New York City for the summer. And it really left me with a new perspective around capital. So these women don't have a lot of financial capital for the summer, but they move in circles with other capital so they can cash in like their social or cultural or intellectual capital. And that kind of gets them by for the summer. And I found that really interesting in terms of, yeah, those, I guess, circles within New York City and how they operate within them. Next, I read Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. I liked this book but I also like books that are filled with characters dealing with depression. So take what you will from that. And if you are also into that, then you'll probably like this book. Then I read Seven Days in June. Mm, this book, I don't think it lived up to the hype. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. And next I read Expectation. So I'm definitely biased on this read because it's set all around the area I live in here in London. And, you know, I know that when I read books based in Sydney and characters are walking down King Street or past carriage works, I'm definitely biased to those books because I feel I can really picture quite physically where the characters are. And I like that parallel life to the life I'm living. But in my non-biased view, it is a tale of three housemates who live together in their 20s. They have similar expectations of what their future might be like. And then it flashes forward to them in their 30s and how they've kind of gone in three very different directions. And so obviously it deals with themes of like friendship and how friendship evolves and the role it plays over such a long stretch of time with changing views and values amongst its characters. So yeah, I think it's a beautiful book and I, I definitely don't regret reading it. So do pick it up if you like that type of book. Next, I read No Hard Feelings. So I read both of Genevieve Novak's books back to back. So clearly I liked her writing style but I can't actually remember the difference between the books. But after Googling what No Hard Feelings was about, I remembered that it was the one about like the on again, off again relationship um, with a boyfriend that doesn't really give her any respect or human decency. There's also some layers of like comparison with her friends and how they're kind of moving forward in their careers while she feels a bit stagnated, stagnant. I love that these books exist, like the sad girl novels because they do represent very real, albeit very white stories of women in their 20s. But historically those stories weren't told or published. So I respect that the genre exists and I will continue to read them, but I don't think this one was a must read. That said, the second book of hers I read straight after, Crushing, once again, great cover. And this one was all about like a character going from serial monogamy to kind of trying to be single without properly resolving her abandonment issues. So once again, a sad girl novel-esque experience. Not a must read, don't regret reading it, uh, do what you will. I think if I had to pick between the two though, I preferred crushing, so maybe start there. Next, I read Pineapple Street. This is a book about rich people being rich. Um, I guess the general plot line and particularly the ending with the youngest daughter, I found quite infuriating. But what I took away from this is the same as what I took away from Succession. Uh, I don't necessarily want rich people's lives. So take what you will, but it's not a must read. Next, I picked up The Creative Act. I feel I joined the bandwagon on this one, um, I guess, but I don't think it needs any more airtime. It was definitely interesting enough. There are a lot of uh, bits of creative inspiration 
that you can kind of pick up at any point of the book and read and take away. I would say in terms of Kindle versus physical book, I'd rather I had bought this as a physical book because it's definitely something you pick up and pick down. It also looks beautiful on your coffee table versus in Kindle format, I found it less intriguing to read. Next, another Australian author. I read Seeing Other People. Okay, so I loved Diana Reed's first book, Love and Virtue. It was one of my favorites from last year and I highly recommend going to pick that book up because ugh, the twist at the end when her friend did that thing, whew, that was so good and so frustrating to read. But this one, like seeing other people, I don't think it lived up as much and whilst I don't regret reading it I found it kind of hard to follow all the different characters and all the different plot lines and the interweaving stories so yeah wouldn't put it up there as a must read whereas I would say Love and Virtue that is a must read. The next book I read was Yellow Face and this is another must read it obviously you've probably seen it everywhere yourselves but I am so glad I picked this one up. I devoured it. I'm sure many other people did. If you haven't read it yet, go add it to your list. Then I read, I'm sorry you feel that way. This was like, uh, yeah, read it if, if you're feeling it. Read, it, read it if it's on your list, but otherwise like not a must read. The next book I read was The Soulmate and you're about to see that I entered the Sally Hepworth universe. <laughs> I don't know how I went so long without reading any of her books, especially because she has so many. She tends to write like domestic thrillers, which I didn't know was a genre until this year. And it turns out, I think I really like that genre. <laughs> so if you're also into domestic thrillers, you'll probably like a lot of Sally Hepworth's books. Uh, the Soulmate was my top two favorite. And then after The Soulmate, I read The Good Sister, and that one was also really good with a really good twist. So those are my two, like, if you have to read any Sally Hepworth books, those are the two to start with. Afterwards, I followed that up with The Younger Wife and then The Mother-in-Law. Leaving the Sally Hepworth universe, I then read First We Make the Beast Beautiful. And no, I don't even know why I picked this up. I don't know why I finished it, then uh, at the local bookstore, I saw Poor Little Sick Girls. And so I picked that one up and I really enjoyed it. So this was a good read, not necessarily a great read, but it did give me another really important perspective on people living with chronic or invisible illnesses. I think it's always important to read more and more of books about perspectives of people you don't necessarily have yourself. And so I think it's important to build that empathy and understanding. And so I liked that this book gave me that. The next book I picked up was Love Marriage. I really liked this one. I wasn't expecting to. The cover is beautiful. It's very bright and colorful. And I think that's what drew me in. Uh, but then the story itself, I really enjoyed. <laughs> I liked the character evolution. So there's two younger characters set to get married, but we also see the stories of their parents and how their parents have influenced um, those younger characters and obviously their choice and decision to get married. Next, I picked up What My Bones Know. My good friend recommended this one and it is a really beautiful book. It is all about, I guess the, it's a memoir about healing from complex trauma. It's just an interesting read about like the memoir of the author herself because she used to be like working on podcasts for This American Life and that kind of perspective as well is interesting. Then I re-entered the Sally Hepworth universe and I picked up The Mother's Promise. Good book, nothing much more. Read it if you want, not a must read. But the next must read is The Family Upstairs. This one had me hooked, I couldn't put it down. I was so intrigued. Um, so yeah, if you like a thriller, definitely pick that one up. Afterwards, I read Post Traumatic. I loved this book. It was such a rich and honest depiction of someone living with PTSD. Yeah, I thought Post Traumatic was just really real and funny and, and rich. So this is a must read. Then we went back into the Sally Hepworth universe again. I read The Secrets of Midwives. This one, maybe pass on. I, don't know. <laughs> uh, I feel really bad saying pass on a book, but I don't know, it's just my opinion. <laughs> then I picked up Something in the Water and I could not for the life of me remember what this book was about. So I quickly had to do a little Google. And as soon as I read the synopsis, I was like, oh, it was that book. And the 
whole story just came back to me instantly. And I really enjoyed this. It was like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith-esque novel where like the honeymooners find something in the water that they possibly shouldn't have found and kind of chaos and action ensues. So I found it very entertaining and I do recommend it. Next, I read The Rachel Incident. And in my Q&A, I mentioned this is one of my top three books of 2023. So if that means anything to you, maybe you wanna go pick it up. And I just really liked how it was about this main character, Rachel, living in Ireland and kind of just like her life and the decisions she makes. And as a reader, I definitely question a lot of those decisions. But afterwards, this book really stuck with me because it kind of just, I don't know, I felt like Rachel was just doing the best she could do in the circumstances. And, you know, we all are trying to do that. <laughs> so I really liked it for that reason. Next, I read Exiles. Uh, I'm a big Jane Harper fan, so I'll always recommend a Jane Harper book. Next, I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, and this is a 100% yes, must read, loved it. The hype is there for a reason. It's a sick book. It is my second or my top three favorite books of 2023, and that is all I have to say. The hype totally lives up. Next, I went back into the Sally Hepworth universe. <laughs> I didn't think she could keep coming back but she did surely I would have read all of her books by now but no I picked up one of her older books the things we keep that was fine um, then I read another of hers which came out last year called darling girls that was also fine but honestly not my favorite one it was a bit met so yeah I think that will finally be the end of the Sally Hepworth books <laughs> in this list. Next, I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time. I don't know, this one was about time travel and I'm not like super into books about time travel. So maybe I didn't like it for that reason. I found it a bit too long and a bit too much like unnecessary information we didn't need as the reader. So this was a bit of a pass for me. Then I picked up Search History and I really liked this one. It was an interesting take on social media and how social media, like we have so much more access to people's lives before we kind of met them and who we know of them as today. So yeah, obviously as the name suggests, it's all about like using the search history uh, for the main character to kind of investigate what her new partner's uh, past relationships were like. And obviously, yeah, not great things are probably gonna come from that. <laughs> So I, I, I enjoyed that book. Then I read The Little Book of Huga, and this was such a quick read, but it was so cute and so light. I read it as we were kind of about to enter winter, and it was just a really nice reminder of how to reframe winter as this cozy, cute moment um, to really like bunker down with candles and board games and cook slow meals. And it really helped me prepare for another British winter. So if you're in a similar boat, maybe it's worth picking up too. Then I picked up The Happy Couple, and The Happy Couple, I think it's a nice nice book it did take me a while to get into I found it a bit of a slow burn as well as that I kind of picked it up like on and off throughout the year so it wasn't just like I didn't finish it all the way through once but I enjoyed it because a lot of my friends started to get engaged so the themes started to feel more relevant to me and obviously it touches on the topics of like long-term relationships engagement and the lead up to a wedding so with that context in mind maybe it could be a good read for yourself if you're in a similar situation then I picked up None of This Is True and I loved this book. Uh, I think it's definitely worth picking up if you love a psychological thriller. There were so many themes of like the thriller-esque part and the psychological part. And as the title suggests, is any of the story true? I do not know and I'm not gonna say any more. Just worth reading. And then on to my third favorite book of 2023. It was The Things We Do To Our Friends. As I said in my Q&A, I probably shouldn't have liked this book. Like there was an unreliable narrator, a lot of themes of narcissism, and yet I found myself hooked and wanting to know more. And I loved the themes of like a young woman trying to make friends and like kind of what she might do for those friendships, but also is the narrator even someone we can trust? I don't know. And all of that complexity just really uh, intrigued me in this book. So I, I really enjoyed it. Then I picked up the list and honestly, mostly because of the cover, it's this beautiful lilac with an emoji on it. And I feel like not 
everyone loved this book in what I've heard or read from reviews. Obviously I think there were some flaws to the plot, like they didn't develop the characters enough for you to like really be invested in them as a couple, but I did find it a refreshing take on Me Too. I'm not sure if I agree with the ending necessarily because it kind of goes against my beliefs. Next, The Success Myth. And as far as self-help books go, this is probably one of my favorites, which is pretty bold to say. I'm also now a huge fan of Emma Gannon's Substack. I think it is great. I didn't necessarily love her novel Olive, um, so it's not like you have to have loved her previous books because this one was all about like what success means to you. So there were a lot of prompts at the end of each chapter for you to answer and it really helped reframe what success means to me. So I found it helpful as far as self-help books go and I think it's really easy to follow along and she's just like a really beautiful writer and that's why I also love her Substack now too. Next I read Something Bad is Going to Happen and you know I don't regret reading it but I'm not going to like recommend it as a must read. That said her first novel Heartsick I did really enjoy that and, and I enjoyed that read a lot actually. Next was Good Material and I wasn't actually a huge fan of this one to be honest. I really liked the female perspective towards the end. Those were my favorite parts of the book, but I don't know if it was worth going through the hundreds of pages I had to about the man-child main character and just like that dude is so not self-aware. And honestly, he wasn't very funny either, but maybe that was the point, I don't know. But I kind of struggled to get through his section. Next I read Honor and I really enjoyed this book. I wasn't expecting to, don't even know where I kind of got it from to add to my reading list, but I did and I'm so glad I did. So this is the story of an Indian American journalist who has to return to India for the first time since she was a child and vowed never to return. And so obviously it deals with like themes of self-identity, um, what impact does a country have on your sense of self and your identity. Yeah, I just really liked the characters, the plot, the development of everything in that book and highly recommend. Next I read We All Want Impossible Things. This was quite a beautiful tale of friendship. It's about a woman who gets diagnosed with terminal cancer and her best friend is with her through to the end and it's a reflection of like both their present day memories as well as their memories through childhood and adulthood together and I definitely found it beautiful. Not necessarily a gripping read but definitely a beautiful story. All right I've just had to close the blind a little bit because the sun is pouring into my eyes. Then I read How to Fail and yeah I love the podcast still. I don't think I necessarily needed to read the book as well. Next I read Consent Laid Bare. This is not just a must read, it is essential reading. I think Chanel is a absolute legend. She is the founder of Teachers Consent which mandated consent education in Australia. Obviously this book is going to be skewed to more Australian um, education systems but regardless just read it. Get up to date on the outdated social construct privileges men's pleasure at the expense of women's humanity. Then I read 4am. So I really like the Shameless podcast and I listened to this as an audio book and it felt like a really natural extension of the podcast for that reason. As someone who doesn't tend to listen to audio books because I find myself getting either distracted or I don't really process the plot lines. I'm really glad I listened to this as an audiobook as it's like a bunch of bite-sized stories from their newsletter and it covers themes of like friendship and dating and self and you know what I learned a thing or two reading this. Lucky last I picked up The Modern when I was in Sydney for Christmas and I read that by the time I got back here in London. It was on the top of my list because it's about an Australian living in New York working at MoMA. She is in her late 20s still finding herself and figuring things out and I really related to that. <laughs> so if you're in a similar position and maybe you like art history a lot because that's weaved in through this is probably the book for you as well. Um, but yeah, oh, that took ages, but those are my 57 books I read this year. I hope it was helpful. If there's any books you want to add to your reading list, I hope that you do. If there's any books you recommend for me to read, please leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here and listening to all of the books. <laughs> 
that was a lot harder than I thought it would be trying to like consolidate my thinking and being like, oh yeah, which book was that? So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps uh, with the algorithm. And I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are. See you next time. Bye.